All Saints Lutheran Church is a ministry of word and sacrament. We believe, teach, and confess that Jesus Christ descends to us and is truly present with us and for us in the divine service, where he delivers his good gifts to us through the tangible, physical means of word and water, bread and wine. Communion with God involves our whole selves, including our bodies, in participation with one another and our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not meant to happen inside our heads, isolated in front of a computer screen. We are glad to offer you these video recordings and online resources to enable you to hear the word, but this can never be a replacement or substitute for the in-person divine service. While extenuating circumstances may justify temporary separation, we look forward to the day when we can receive Christ's gifts together in the divine service.
Good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year. We have a new church year beginning today, Advent 1, uh, rejoicing in uh, the, the, the reality that uh, the church uh, observes time a little bit differently from the rest of the world, right? The church calendar, the church uh, year is centered around Christ. And so in this season, we put ourselves in the, in the place of uh, the Old Testament saints who are longing for Christ's first coming. We we uh, recognize and see the reality of Christ having come as we consider uh, the forerunner John the Baptist and his announcements of Christ's coming. Uh, today there's the, the theme of Jesus coming into Jerusalem as well as that Old Testament longing. And of course also in that Advent season uh, we are reflecting on uh, that uh, longing that we still have as God's church that Christ will come again in glory uh, to judge the living and the dead and bring to fulfillment all that he has promised to us in the new heavens, the new earth, and life uh, in his kingdom to come. So Advent, a very rich uh, and wonderful season uh, to reflect on our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as we begin, a couple, uh, couple of announcements today. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome our visitors. We're glad to have you here with us today. Uh, as a congregation of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, we practice closed communion. That's a little unfamiliar to some outside of our tradition, although it is the a tradition and practice of the historical church, universal. Uh, what that means, though, for you uh, as a visitor is that if you're not currently a communicant member of another Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation, I'd like to have opportunity as pastor here to teach you uh, about what we believe, teach and confess, and ensure that you are properly prepared to receive this great and most uh, wonderful mystery uh, of the Lord's Supper. So uh, again, if you're not a communicant member, uh, we ask that you wait. Uh, I'd be happy to talk with you about that after, uh, after church today. Some other announcements. Uh, number one, uh, voters assembly meeting today after the divine service. There'll be a light lunch also uh, before we begin that. So come and join us for that uh, if you're a voting member. Uh, also join us for midweek Advent services. Uh, the, uh, I think we're still having on the agenda the Friday uh, men's meeting. Uh, so, uh, and get, get, get together, eat together on Friday uh, the 8th. Uh, I've been asked to announce that there will be no uh, craft day uh, Friday. The group is going to go instead to see the Gingerbread House contest at the Ballantine Hotel, and they'll be meeting there at 1030. So if you're interested in joining that uh, be sure to do that. So that's it then for our announcements. Uh, let us rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we begin a new church year, we pray that you would lead us to cry out uh, to you uh, in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, to eagerly long for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, even as we uh, remember, celebrate his coming in the flesh, the womb of the Virgin Mary. Bless this time, this season, and this divine service as we receive Christ and his gifts. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, a merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy and innocent of your sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
my God, and you are trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. <laughs> your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Sunday in Advent is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country, and out of all the countries where he had driven them, then they shall dwell in their own land. This is the word of the Lord. and any other commandments are summed up in this word. 
You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling, quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. And be to God. <coughs> first chapter. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate. He saw the grace of the and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
text for our meditation today is the Old Testament reading, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 through 8. In the name of Jesus, amen. Passover deliverance and exodus from Egypt was the greatest salvific event of the Old Testament. It was to the Old Testament people what Holy Week and Easter is to us. There, God delivered them from slavery and death by the sacrifice of the Passover lamb. There, he delivered them out of the hand of their enemy by leading them through the parted waters on dry ground and drowning Pharaoh and his army in the depths of the sea. The Passover feast was the chief holy day in the Hebrew calendar. And the Psalms again and again repeatedly praise the only true God who delivered his people from the hands of Pharaoh and brought them up out of the land of Egypt. But Jeremiah says in our Old Testament reading that the days are coming when God's people will no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. In other words, the days are coming when a greater salvific event will overshadow and eclipse even the Exodus. What will this greater saving event be? Jeremiah prophesies. The days are coming when the Lord will raise up for David a righteous branch. And this righteous branch shall reign as king, deal wisely, and execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called... The Lord is our righteousness. <coughs> Who else could meet that description other than Jesus himself? Jesus is, after all, the son of David, born of Mary and cared for by Joseph, who were both of the house and lineage of David. He is the righteous branch sometimes elsewhere called the shoot from the stump of Jesse, who was King David's father, the great and mighty tree of the house of David had long been cut down. The house of David had been brought low and would even appear to be dead and gone with the Babylonian captivity. But from the stump, a shoot a righteous branch would come. Jesus, the true king who deals wisely, who executes justice and righteousness in the land. He executes justice by taking upon himself what justice demands. He suffers and dies for our offenses under the hand of God's justice. And he executes righteousness by giving his perfect righteousness to us. We are his chosen people, the true offspring of Abraham. Those who have the faith of Abraham. In him, Judah is saved and Israel dwells securely. The kingdom, once divided in its sin and idolatry, has been reunited and restored. The throne returned to David. Jeremiah here isn't referring to any kind of political kingdom, but to an eternal kingdom. The new Israel, the church, which is ruled in love by Jesus Christ, who is the true and eternal heir of God. David. That is what Jeremiah was saying 
so many years before. He was looking forward to the day when a new and greater salvific event, even greater than the Passover and Exodus from Egypt, would occur. That event, the cross and resurrection of Jesus, his incarnation in the flesh, his suffering and death for sinners, his glorious resurrection and his ascension, that would be the new and greater exodus of the people of God, the new and greater deliverance for the people of God. And that means that the coming of Christ is the central event in the history of the universe, not just of Israel. Jesus is the true and final Passover lamb, sacrificed to reconcile humanity back to the Father. His death and resurrection is our exodus from the slavery of sin, death, and the devil. And we pass through the waters of our baptism into freedom right now and ultimately into the promised land. The true promised land, the promised land of the Old Testament was meant to foreshadow. We enter the true promised land of eternal life in heaven. And the new heavens and the new earth promised when Jesus comes again in glory. And so, therefore, we, the church, no longer say, He is the Lord who brought us out of Egypt. Instead, we say, As the Lord lives, He has brought us from the ends of the earth. He has gathered us to Himself by His death on the cross. He has made us His people by declaring us righteous. We say, the Lord is our righteousness. Jesus is our righteousness, for he has taken away our sins by his death on the cross, and he gives his own righteousness to us. Here, God reveals, through Jeremiah his prophet, this most wonderful name of the Messiah. Hear this name. The Lord is our righteousness. What a beautiful name for the Messiah. Yahweh is our righteousness. In order for that to be true, Yahweh himself had to become one of us. To take all that we are into his own person. That beautiful name, the Lord is our righteousness, points us to the miracle of the incarnation where God took on human flesh. And it points to that most comforting truth that not only is the Messiah righteous in himself, having never sinned, perfectly pure and holy, but that the Messiah is our righteousness through his perfect life of obedience through his suffering and death his rising to life he won for us justification reconciliation with God the forgiveness of our sins united to Jesus in baptism his righteousness is ours Yahweh is our righteousness Jesus is is our righteousness. What he did, he did for you. He made you his own. He is your certainty. He is your hope. He is your confidence. And that's exactly what we need to hear as we stand here at the beginning of a new church year. We don't begin with baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Instead, we begin with the prophecies of the coming king, the righteous branch of David, who in our gospel rides into Jerusalem to execute justice and righteousness for us. He who once came in the flesh in Bethlehem came to Jerusalem to die and rise for you. He did it because God's justice demanded a sacrifice. 
His justice demanded your life because of your sins. Your righteousness was not enough. It could never be enough. But Jesus gave his life for yours. His sacrifice satisfied God's justice. He died to make you his own. He substituted himself for you and declared you righteous just as he is righteous. And he comes to us now in his body and blood. He is our righteousness because he gives himself, his very self to us in this sacrament. So we welcome our king as we sing the Sanctus. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Finally, he will come in terrors on the last day. He will come to judge the nations. But it won't be a terror to us. It will be a joy and delight. Why? Because the Lord is our righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. gather our offerings for the Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, awaken your saints from sleep and idleness as we enter another church year. 
Encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Grant strength and courage, faithfulness and protection to all missionaries, especially those whom we support with our financial gifts and prayers, including the Jastrom, Bombaro, Preuss, Rickman, Neufer, Shaneyfelt, and Federowitz families. Give boldness and faithfulness to Matthew, our Synod President, William, our District President, Ron, our Circuit Visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and quicken the love of all Christians to cast off the works of darkness, put on Jesus Christ, and live as children of the eternal day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness. Clothe us with the armor of light. Preserve the single in holiness. Lead husbands and wives to love one another and raise their children in the faith. And lead children to honor and serve their parents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders and protect our armed forces, taking them under your care and blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit us in your compassion, O Lord. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their afflictions, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear. Especially we pray for David, Jerry, Barbara, Gabby, Jennifer, Sylvia, Crystal, Arlene, Ken, Brian, Walter, Alan, Stetson, Cheryl, Juanita, Eric, David, Betty, Alvina, Larry, Cherry, Ebby, Brent, a student of Amy, Fanny, Sue, Dale, Chrissy, Thomas, James, Ruby, Sarah, Jim, Christina, and Alicia. Grant also your protection to all mothers with child and to the children they carry in their womb, especially for Rachel, Melinda, Lauren, and Alexandria. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem to shouts and cheers of joy. Grant that we may be stirred by the word and sacraments to rejoice anew, now and at his second advent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you declared that the days were coming when you would accomplish our salvation. And in your time, you caused your son, the righteous branch, to spring up for David. By your grace, keep us joined as branches to Christ, that we might bear fruit until the day he returns in glory. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
sins forgiven. Thanks be to God.